Kia ora te whanau. So, for anyone who hasn't met me, I'm Tanisha Jowsey. Much like you, I imagine, there is a great, um, you know, that ever-present feeling of, of uh, urgency to publish something, anything, anything at all, hopefully something brilliant, something that will get cited, definitely want to be in a good journal and not one of those other journals, um, and want to make sure that all of all of the right things are happening, right? So um, there's there's a few things that I have learned over the last 20 years that have um, given me a sense of what to do, what to avoid, the art of storytelling in scientific journals. Now, I say that in the context that, as many of you will know, I have a YouTube channel and I'm making all these YouTube videos on how to do stuff and how to tell stories and how to promote clinical learning. So I have got a bit of an idea of some of the different ways in which we can bring, bring our stories to life through, in this case, our writing. How do we do that? I'm going to share a few stories with you and it'll be up to you to glean what you will from them. My first story is entitled Bright-Eyed and Bushy-Tailed. And it, I'm taking us back to 2007. I had zero publications. I had zero idea which way it was up. And a friend that I made there said to me, would you like to be on this publication? And we'll write a publication about um, practice nursing. And I said, sure. I, that sounds like a great idea. That, that sounds like a great idea. That like a great idea. Oh my goodness, it was like, <laughs> so very exciting times. My friend Kelly said to me, let's write this report. We'll do a report on, on what practice nursing has got to offer in this space. I said, sure. And off we went and we wrote a report. We published on the website of the place where I worked and I thought, oh, cool. This seems like a really great way to get an easy publication. I didn't have to go through all of that peer review process. That's fantastic. But also it was never cited. Do I have any citations on that uh, piece of work that probably took me six weeks to put together? No. <laughs> then my boss, Nick, said to me, how about you help me write a book chapter? It's for an international um, book from the European Observatory of Her Health and I've been asked to do the Australia chapter. You could help me, you could be an author on this and we could write it and I need you to put together a bunch of tables and get me some stats on chronic illness in Australia. I said sure boss and um, with my bright eyes and my bushy tail I set about finding information that he no doubt already knew. And I spent a very long time putting together all this information and lots of it turned out to be wrong because I didn't know where to get the information. I didn't know how to appraise um, literature <laughs> uh, in, a, in a useful kind of a way. And we kept having to have these conversations where he would say to me, okay, I want you to put your hand on your heart and tell me that you are absolutely certain that this information is robust and evidenced and that we can use this in the chapter. And I was like, yes, this time I've got it right. Trust me, I know it this time. This one is absolutely, yeah, we've figured it out. Or well, this is the you know Australian Bureau of Statistics. Trust me on this one, it's bona fide. And that is the first book chapter that I wrote and it is um, it, what I learned from that chat from that process was to always triple check facts, always triple check references, check that they are robust, check that I've read it properly. As it turned out, I already built a rocket. These were really important learning uh, moments for me in terms of being able to now write quite quickly um, at a reasonably high quality um, it's based on those foundations what do we do when we get those invitation emails uh, from someone we've never heard of who says they're the editor of a journal we've never heard of but it sounds really brainy it sounds like a good brainy one um, i did have i did have one um really great learning moment where 
I learned not to publish in what is called a vanity journal. And um, that's the journal that invites you and gives you, you know, sort of feeds into your sense of vanity by going, we've read your article on blah de blah. Dear Professor, which is your first warning sign, because I'm not a professor. Dear Professor, we've learned blah de blah from reading your paper about blah de blah, and we would like to invite you to write a paper, because we're in short form, and we would like you to write a paper that um, will only require uh, 2,000 words, but we need it by Tuesday. <laughs> I was taken in. And, and to be fair to myself, I've probably had thousands of these. And once, one time I was taken in. And just that one time was all I needed in order to, um, to really learn <laughs> that it is not worth your while. They invited um, me to write a paper with my director and I did have a really good paper there that I'd been working on for the last two years and I was like yep this is a really good piece it could go in here that'd be great but I want it to be open access and I don't want to have to pay because they've invited me so I said to them down the line I want this to be made open access and they said sure but it'll cost you know three thousand dollars I said no and then they went silent for a while and they came back and said, okay, we can do it for $200. And I said, oh, okay, well, that's quite a big difference from 3,000. Sure, I think we can probably find 200. So we paid $200 to get this article, which was a really good article published in this journal. And then when it was published, when it went live, there were glitches all over the PDF. Some of the text, literally half, the bottom half of the text was cut off. And it, the high res photos that we had provided to them of surgical training looked like rubbish. It looked like my four year old had taken them. My learning from that was do not, under any circumstances, publish with these journals when they invite, okay darling, when they invite you. A good way to tell if they're a good journal is they'll be indexed on PubMed. Another way to tell if they're a good journal is they'll have an impact factor.